Okay, so today we're going to try and create another way for you to use our drop-down search components on OutSystems. We actually already have a video for how to do drop-down searches if you're getting it from the database. This one this is going to be a little different. Uh, we still have the same control here. We have the values there. But instead of fetching this from the database, or as you can see, we can do the search. But instead of fetching this from the database, instead we're going to focus on how to build this out just by using a local variable. There might be cases where you don't want to use the built-in database on OutSystems. Maybe you're talking to an API. Maybe it's just a very, very small list that uh, you, know, you want your users to be able to search through. So this video will help you with that. So this is what it looks like after I've done everything. But let's go ahead and change this. Let's go back to a previous version where none of these have already been created. So I'm starting from scratch. This is your basic web application. So what I'll do first is let's create a new screen just to hold our drop-down search. And this is just going to be an empty screen. We're going to say drop-down search with local variable. And that will be our main page. You're still going to use the same component. So here, if you go to the components panel on the left and search for well, search, <laughs> you're going to see the drop down search here. You can just drag and drop that onto the screen as you see here. So there are two important things here that we have to fill out since out systems is highlighting it as uh, something we have to address. It's the item list and the handler. So the item list, actually, the only thing you need to do is to create a local variable to hold that drop down item list and maybe you want to also have a local variable for the selected item so selected drop down item so these are the only two things you actually really need to focus on to get this working and uh, we'll select that from the drop down here and the selected item here and of course we have to specify a handler here you can just select the drop down and uh, create a new client action we won't really be doing anything here. This is an event that's triggered after an element has been selected, but our focus here is to create this drop-down search just with a local variable. Honestly, right now, uh, it doesn't matter how you populate this field as long as you get items on this drop-down item list. It can be through an API, it can be manually if you have uh, fixed values that you want to attach to it. But as long as this has something in it, the search will work automatically, okay? But for the benefit of this demo, I will help you or show you how we can populate this using an API, okay? That's, this is probably one of the more common situations where you'd need to actually create a local variable because there's no other way to store that information. And you don't, maybe you don't want to keep pinging the API endpoint to get all of those records, filter them out, because it uh, requires network uh, network time. So with the ability to just store them on a local variable, it makes it easy to just search once the page has been loaded. And for this demo, I'm actually going to use a uh, resource called JSON placeholder. It has a lot of nifty API endpoints. I'm going to use the comments one. This is actually the output. So it's all uh, your lorem ipsum text. I'm going to use the ID as the identifier for each of the records and the email since this is the one that's you know easy to understand. <laughs> I don't speak lorem ipsum. So I'll just copy the link here. And we're going to use that uh, in the OutSystems platform. So I'll just go to the Logic tab. In this part, you probably already know, but if not, OutSystems supports connecting to APIs and you can do that by consuming the REST API. So just go to the Logic tab under REST, you should be able to consume the REST API. You can add a whole Swagger file, for example, of methods, but here we only have one, so we'll add that single method in. Paste the URL I got from JSON placeholder and click on test to see the output. So you see here we have the values. I uh, can copy this response to the, uh, I can copy the response so that OutSystems will generate a model for this. I have the post ID, the ID, well, I only need really two things from this, the ID and the email, but uh, it comes with everything. So we'll do with that. <laughs> Click Finish. So now that we have this endpoint uh, registered without systems, we need to use it on our page. 
let's go back to the interface tab and then here we can right click on the screen on the specific view that we want to attach fetching from this data source select fetch data from other sources and here you'll have the option of calling that api endpoint i'm just going to rename this so it's clear get comments and then the parameter the output parameter should be changed to the data type of the get comments uh, response so here we can just uh, copy this data type hopefully this will work and then replace the data type here so then you should have oh i guess it doesn't want the copy and paste <laughs> so we'll just type get comments response and then select list there you go and that should be how we get our output now to call it you just have to drag and drop let me just extend this here you just have to drag and drop the get comments api endpoint here and going back to the interface tab specify that we should assign it to the out one parameter but you should definitely replace this with a more memorable name <laughs> as to what this is supposed to be out one is a default and i'll stick with that for now because uh, i'm more interested in getting this demo out for you guys to try out so we have the get comments so this is doing just the first part, fetching the results from our API endpoint. Now we have to assign them to the drop-down item list. You could do it here inside uh, this function, this get comments call. Personally, and I believe this is a better way to uh, manage your actions, I prefer using the events on after fetch, so it's more consistent. And if, for example, my end API endpoint changes, something changes within, uh, let's say, where I get my data, I can reuse my on after fetch instead of having to uh, change this one every time. So we'll create a new client action for fetching the records here. Let's expand this. So here, what we want to do is iterate over the responses from the API endpoint. We have the for each component here, drag and drop that there. Our record list is going to be the get comments.out1. This is where our posts are coming from. And then we want to save them in our drop-down item list. When we do this, we are now shifting it from just calling the API endpoint every time to once it's called, store it in a local variable so other components can use it. We're going to use the list append function. Oops, list append, there we go. Uh, there's, there are two list appends. The first one is usually for the front end, and the second one is usually for the server side or back end. So I have to use this first one. Oops. Open that again and drop it here. Okay. Now we just connect the loop like so. And then list append. The list is going to be your drop down item list. So we're just going to select that there. For element, uh, the drop down item list has a specific structure, it has to have, be in the format of value and text. Since our get comments is using multiple fields, we just have to select which ones we're going to use. You can click the plus button here beside element to specify the value. The value is how we uniquely identify this uh, record or this item. And I'm going to use, as I mentioned earlier, the dot ID. So we just select uh, get comments out one current and the ID. This is uh, when inside the context of a loop, the, the current is going to refer to the currently selected item inside this loop or the current value that we're at and will automatically increment or change to the next one so we'll specify the id and then the text so here i'm going to use the email address so let me just look for that here here you go the email now this functionality for searching through the drop down will work based on the text so whatever it is you want to search or be searchable, it should be the text value, okay? And once you have that set up, so it's adding now to that list of drop-down items. Once you're done, you can actually just click on publish and you should see those changes take effect. So since I reverted to an older version, we want to overwrite it with this new one. And then let's see if everything will work out. just open it up on the browser tab uh -huh, there you go so we have here a drop down again all the all the email addresses i can search for abigail and it should show up uh, everything that has the uh keyword abiga <laughs> 
this is going to work uh, if even if the text is in between. So as you can see, we were we weren't only expecting email addresses that start with Abigail, but also anything that has the set of characters in between. So you'll have those available. Okay. If I just go back to Service Studio, one of the things that we have to I have to make sure to mention is let's go back to an after fetch. This function will always if we refresh the page, for example, there we go. Uh, you should see it refresh right there. Uh, this will always operate on an empty list since we're doing this at the very, very start of the page load. So you won't have to worry about duplicates. But if you're calling this function, if you're doing an append anywhere after we load the page, uh, you just have to make sure that there aren't any duplicate records when you append to the list. You might want to do some checks because it is very easy to accidentally add a value to your list without intentionally doing so, especially when it's called maybe through a button click or triggered by an event that happens more than once. So those situations, you may want to consider adding an if condition here to make sure the items you're adding to your list are unique. Okay, so that should be it for this video. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, let us know if this is useful, if this is something that you are or were looking for, and hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.